Dune, Arrakis, Desert Planet. Do the masters truly control the strings? Or can we use the strings to ensnare the masters? Yes. For I'm the one, again, from the book, Hunters of Dune. Yes, for I'm the one, and I'm the only. I am Hobo Tom. Let me take off these meager trappings and encase me. But yes, yes. here, that's enough of this good theme. Again, that's a little bit from the soundtrack of Dune. I think that was the original one, though. So yeah, let me crank that volume back down. But folks, you know what? I just came from an amazing movie. I just saw Dune, finally. It came out in theaters. I said, you know what? I want the theater experience of Dune. I'll tell you what, it was a thoroughly amazing movie. I'm just going to rate it right now. Again, if you're familiar with my rating systems, it's a filet mignon movie. Mwah. I'm not going to give away the whole thing. Um, I will address some criticisms. Probably first, for only because it's the easiest the things I didn't like about it. There, I think there's really only a few things I didn't like about it. One, there was no Fader Autha. Um, he was kind of intricate to the Dune book. Again, it's on the bookshelf because now, because of our president, there's a paper shortage. So, who knows what's going to happen to books anymore. And again, people are illiterate nowadays and have to watch video streams and don't, like, if I gave people this book, they'd be like, what the hell do I do with this? This, this has, like, words and, and papers and I don't know. This, however, is a treasure. Is this the one that's autographed? Ooh, it is! This is an autographed copy, too. So that's pretty cool. Brian Herbert signed this book. And Kevin J. Anderson? I know it's Brian. It's probably Brian Herbert's signature. Amazing book. This is a treasure now. Now that I know. I knew one of them was autographed. I just couldn't remember which one. I digress though. Um, yeah. So the things I didn't like about Dune, there was no Fade Rautha. Jeez, I think that was it. What I did like about it, the special effects were amazing. It didn't look like CGI. This actually looked like something that could have happened. Uh, would be, say, 8,000 year, 8, plus years from now. I honestly thought, and this is probably just my own goofiness. Maybe it made sense in my mind. I honestly thought the whole Dune took place in the year 10,181. They said 10,191. Eh, I'm off by a decade. That's actually, I'm actually pretty close to it. It's probably one of the other books that I have on, on the shelf. It said this happened in, in uh, 10,181. Which would make sense a little bit. Or it's the newest book. Um, I think it's Duke Leto. Atreides or, or, or Paul. Uh, yeah, something like that. I know it's on my, my soon to be read list. So I'm not going to mess with this. So I will try to keep this short. One thing I didn't like is they didn't have Fader Autha. Unless. And I know this was more in the, the book. Fade Rautha did a lot of training with Count Fenner, who was kind of Shadam the Force close friend. So I don't know if, if when they come back, because this was only part one, too. I guess that's the second thing. They could have done a truly epic movie, made it like five hours. I, I would have sat through the whole thing. Or even if they did like the old school thing where they had like a good 10 minute intermission. Between parts one and two, so you can go out, and as long as you had your movie ticket, you can go back in. That would be cool. That that harken back to the days of Ben Hur and the Ten Commandments. So that's going back a while. Jeez, I forget. If, I think they did do that in the theaters a long time ago for the epic movies, the tens of th the cast of thousands. I think they did that with Spartacus too. 
that's all other story. Well, with Dune, um, they didn't have Fader Eluthan in there, so I was very curious to see who was going to play him. Um, I think that was the only thing I didn't like. Wow. Things I did like. Again, CGI effects spot on. Other thing that I truly appreciated, all the actors fit the role. That was amazing. Um, to, to see the floating fat man, the Baron, Baron Vladimir Hug. Oh, I know the other thing I didn't like. They, they called him Harkonnen, which is a very British way of saying it, I guess. I'm old school. I still say Harkonnen. Out there in the YouTube universe, you let me know which one's the proper way. I forget what the pronunciation guy of the book says. I know some of these books. Maybe they do have. No, this one doesn't. I think some of them, they have like literally a glossary of terms. It's really cool. I think the original one does. But not moving on though. Again, this has the autograph though. This is cool. But yeah, um, I think that was my only other, there was no Fader Utha, and they spoke very English. And the writing was kind of weird. I expected, it looked semi-Arabic, more leaning towards Greek almost in some parts. I don't know if they would have gone like Warhammer and gone Gothic with like Latin words. I do appreciate the fact that they did use different languages. And, and they use, use battle signs to do stuff. So they talked about battle language, and that was pretty cool. And they use again, Atreides hand signs. So, again, very precise. Again, they use the battle language of both the Atreides, like the Atreides spoke in their own battle language, or Conan spoke in their own battle language. Uh, the Saduka, Saduka looked like badasses in this. Um, they, they did have their masks on. That was really cool, but you could kind of see their face. So it wasn't the full-fledged hood from Dune where it looked like they were in a hazmat suit. But it wasn't the cheesy outfit that they got during the sci-fi TV series. So the actors definitely fit the characters. I appreciate that. That looked really good. Duke Leto Atreides. He looked like he could have been Duke Leto Atreides. Paul Atreides looked like he could have been Paul Atreides. Lady Jessica, spot on perfect. Batista looked like an absolute badass as the Beast Raban. Uh, Jason and Mamora looked great as Duncan. Uh, Gurney Halleck was pretty good, although I still do miss my Patrick Stewart as Gurney Halleck. But still, he did the Gurney Halleck really good, kind of with the odd phrases every so often, just like Gurney Halleck in the book would do. Uh, they have a little bit less of the ink fine scar on his face. Patrick Gurney, they really did up more with the ink fine scar. I, that, but that's it, it, that's so minor. Um, again, the actors fit the role. Special effects were on point, perfect. The portrayal of the different peoples. Um, oh, and they showed the name of the planets. That was awesome. Planet, it said a Kaladin home of House Atreides, so he knew where things were. Gidi Prime, home of House Harkonnen. Uh, Salus the Secondus, training ground of, of, of uh, the Sadaqa homeworld, or so, the Sadaqa homeworld. Uh, yeah, the Sadaqa homeworld, or training grounds, so whatever it was. I like that. So now, okay, this is where we are, and then of course they had Dune, and then the parentheses, Arrakis, formerly of House Harkonnen. Um... Other, it, it was from my per and now so I gave you the good I gave you the bad only two things no Fader Utha and they spoke with a funky English accent and made Har Harkonnen sound weird still Harkonnen I think I gave you the good way I thought the characters fit it effects were spot on everything they needed to do to get someone vested into the film was there my personal aspects of it now uh, I thought, again, I thought it was an amazing movie. I got nervous when I heard a coworker say, yeah, this movie was boring. It's not boring. That's the thing. There's just enough political... In it wasn't boring for me, and I don't think it was boring for the people that actually saw Dune and have read the Dune books. There's just enough space between the action sequences where there's a little political intrigue, 
and or it sets something up. Uh, case in point, probably the very beginning, they showed the Harkonnen treating the Zensumi Desert Warriors, the Fremen of Arrakis, very poorly. They had the attack. Again, so you have very simply Harkonnen versus the Fremen to begin with. Then you go to Duke Leto, where they say, yeah, Paul, time to wake up. Again, daily, kind of daily life of the son of a duke. Yeah, Paul was having his, his dream about Shani, which was good. I do like the fuzzy, blurry images, the kind of like jumbled this, because that's, that's what I would, if you think about when you dream, yeah, you don't dream really in sequence. You're like, yeah, I remember like parts of a dream, but I don't remember the whole linear sequence of it. So that looked really good, too. Dream sequence is spot on. Um, they, they showed uh, the plot. But then again, it's like, oh, why do I have to get changed into formal dress uniform? Again, something a teenage boy would say, it's like, why do I have to really... It's like, oh, it's a, like, oh, it's like son, get changed. It's like, it's like, wake up, get changed. What, what, what do I wear? We have the envoys coming. They're like, oh, military dress? No, formal court wear. Formal court wear. The court wear looked great too. I do like the fact that he did kind of do a more stylized Art Deco eagle for the for the Atreides uniform. Um, again, but then they go through the proclamation was read um, with representatives of the Landsrad there. So yeah, people say eh, eh, it's just boring. We just want to see the action. The thing is, this leads up to the action because then now you have. House Atreides, you see him kind of packing up stuff. A good scene between Paul and his father. It's like, hey, listen, I'm just happy you're my son. Oh, um, the other feel good kind of homie moment. Um, I guess they're getting the sleep pills, and, and Duke Leto says, I, uh, Lady Jessica's in bed. It's like, I don't want to fall asleep like that. So he just kind of leans back on his wife, um, his or his concubine. Uh, Jess, his concubine Jessica then just begins to give him a forehead massage and you're like, oh, that's cute. Um, I think the, the only awkward scene was when Paul started to change and, and strip a little bit. They both turn around, cut, like, that, that's such, I just wanted to see what Lady Jessica looked like naked from behind. But that's me, I'm, I, I, I like things like, I like seeing naked women. But other than that, yeah, that's, that's just terrible too, by the way. So... Again, it, it held, it, it, and now a little bit more in detail. So again, you had political intrigue and then some action, longer political intrigue, s some more action. Um, got into the politics of it a little bit much. I don't think too much though. Um, as far as the movie itself, it stayed true a little bit to the books, um, and the other movies. It uh, there were just some. And I can't complain about it because I'm sure someone said, yeah. It's like, uh, Chani is up on the cliff saying, I won't allow you to hurt my friend. In the original movie, I won't allow you to harm my tribe. Minor, minor line changes here and there. Again, Green Halix added lines is so much better. Um, it, it stayed true more so to the series than the book. It, it deviated a, a lot from the book, but it still had the spirit of the book. Um, the, the first Dune kind of gave you a little bit more, and then went through the book. Yeah, parts, it, it kind of chopped up the books into, like, the really boring political stuff. Got rid of that. And just had more of the action, and the sci-fi sequences were amazing. Um, the uh, sci-fi series, it kind of cheesified it a little bit. Stayed true word for word for the book. Again, really drawn out miniseries though. This movie, even though it's going to be in two parts, it stayed true more so towards the series. Again, there's a whole series of books, as you can see on. I think it's is it this. It's probably this row. I think yeah. So it's on this row, all the Dune series of books. But yeah, it stayed true, and it showed. I think the one scene that really stood out. Paul had one of his waking visions where he's standing on a Kaladin transport with Chani, and Chani's eyes look huge because she sees the seeds of Kaladin. But Chani's never seen an ocean before. 
water is sacred and you don't see much of it on Dune. So all of a sudden, I know in uh, one of the books, like she's like, I couldn't imagine there would be this much water anywhere. Kind of like the um, Star Wars line when Ray said, I couldn't imagine there would be this much green in, in all the galaxy. Like, Chani, when she said, people drown in water? The Fremen wish they could drown in water. Because it's that scarce on Arrakis. So they had that. They had the political intrigue. It's like, you're the judge of the change. You can do this. Oh, wait a second. And then Paul said, wait a second. I'm Duke Paul Trades. He had a signet renown. Um, Duncan Idaho, he, he, he pledged his loyalty to Duke. Kissed the ring. Put the ring against his forehead. You are my Duke. Again, Paul had that kind of realization. It's like, wow. Duncan and I were friends. He was like tapping me on the arm saying, I have no muscle. And all of a sudden, he's, he's on his knees in front of me, like kissing my ring, saying, you are my Duke. Big moment there. And his, the facial emotions of Paul was great. Again, um, he got to the Mahanations, the political Mahanations of it. He said, you know what? I'm a Duke. I'm a son. The emperor has no sons. He has no, legit, he's, he has no, no um, male heir, but he has a bunch of daughters. I go and marry Earl Ren, his eldest daughter. And all of a sudden, I can change everything. And you saw visions of, a little bit later on in the book series, of the whole um, uh, crusade, again, kind of against the emperor, the, the, the whole jihad part. And that led up everything to, I think, Sandworms of Dune. That's kind of like the end of it, where they kind of terraform Walk 9. Again, you had the Ben Jesuit looks spot on. Lady Jessica spot on for a Ben Jesuit. Character work was great. Um, really held true to the book, and I'm probably rambling a lot now. But it really did do great homage to not so much just Dune, the middle book, but the entire series, though. Maybe it's not that one. Oh, it's not that one. It's up here. Yep, so you have Dune here in the middle whole prequel to Dune, which comprises of, like, House Crino, House Arconan, House Atreides, uh, Bolterian Jihad, The Machine Crusade, Battle of Corin, Road to Dune, Dune, then you have Paul of Dune, The Winds of Dune, Sisterhood of Dune, Sandwords of Dune, Hunters of Dune. Uh, it goes back a little bit then in history with the Men's Hats and the Navigators of Dune. But it really did a good job of encompassing the entire series, Again, because there's the one one vision where, where, that Paul had when when again staring at the oceans of Caladan. The hell is an ocean? We're used to fighting for freaking drops of water. A movie started off great. Started off again. Told you the Harkonnens ruled Dune. Give you a background of, of why Dune's important. The spice changed the navigators. Uh, human humanity was was scattered throughout the known galaxy. The, the whole Lansrod. The Padasha Emperor, um, without s the Spice Melange, yeah, space travel gets really wonky, and navigators can't do it without it. Again, it's kind of like, they didn't say it, but it was kind of like the pre-science of all that. Uh, got into the whole backstory between House Harkonnen, oh, there's my cat, the most littered cat ever. Um, House Harkonnen, the feud between House, House Harkonnen and House Atreides. Um, the Sarika look absolutely badass. They look great for a change. Fremen look really good. They, they gave a good explanation of the silt suits. Any classic movie scenes, Liet Kynes goes, goes to check the Duke's suit. Gurney Halk literally puts a knife to her neck. Really good. Um, oh, uh, Shad from Shadowversary did a really good job, I think, breaking down. It's like, wow, this movie made sense. Why do they fight with shields and short swords? Again, they do use bullets and last guns. But again, if you read the books, especially the early ones, you can't use last guns against shields because with that, you make a nuclear explosion. Nuclear explosions tend to be bad. And my screen froze, so this is going to be funky. Um, they have, again, technology. They have suspensor fields. Uh, they have slow-moving bullets. You just can't fire a last gun. You just can't fire a bullet because, again, it explains shields only go... Only slow-moving things go through shields. Um, again, one part of the book is like, well, well um, 
Oh, what's his face? Silgar says, that's just because, like, why, why, why is he toying with him? He could have killed him ten slices ago. Mainly in the book, it's like, well, one said Paul's never killed anyone before. And Silgar's like, okay. And two, I think in the book, it tells out, yeah, he's used to shield fighting, where you kind of go fast, 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 and then you have to go, no, you have to go fast, 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 and then nice and slow for the killing blow. So it kind of explains a lot. Uh, Ashad again did a great job talking about it. Yeah, this actually makes sense. Why you have short swords and daggers? Because you have great control where you can go really fast, but then you have really controlled movement. So Ashad did a great job of that. Obviously, he's, he's either saw the movie or the clips. Again, I do recommend seeing this movie. Um, stay true to the entire series. Only other bad thing I can think of is that you have to wait two more years for the next movie to come out. Uh, that's the only bad thing. Um, I, and then I'm wondering who's going to be Fade Routh. Personally, I'd like to see as actors, if they're going to show the Padishah Emperor Shaddam the Fourth, that should be Max von Sydow. Such a minor thing, though. As long as the character fits, fits the bill, I'm okay with that. So honestly, again, I highly recommend going out Pay the ten bucks. I think I paid the like, the eleven. Pay the ten ten to twelve dollars. See it in the theater. I say that because one, the critics like really poo pooed it, and I have my own reasons. Two, I have my one coworker, twenty some odd years younger than me, said, "Yeah, this movie was boring." Yeah, because. If you're raised based on like Marvel movies and action, 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 action. Oh wait, we need to tranquilo, and then we'll go back to action, action, action. Yeah, this movie's kind of boring. Listen, folks, Lincoln, that was a boring movie. That was way too, way, way showed way too much of the political machine. Dune showed just enough, and this makes me sound like get off my yard, but you know what? These damn millennials can't appreciate a good movie when they see one. It was just enough. Honestly, the only two times I looked at my watch was when the lights actually went out. I just wanted to see when the movie actually started because I know at, I think the movie started at 4.30, 4.25. They had all the previews going. So I'm like, well, I wonder what time this movie starts. And then the only time is then literally like right before the credits. Um, after this scene where Paul kills uh, a Janus, and you see them start the long track trek back to Siege Tabor or, or Tabor, I, I don't know what they call it. I don't know what pronunciation guy they're using, but they go back to the siege, and it's just the whole long procession line, and then it, it fades to black. You see the credits, and you're like, "Bravo, bravo, bravo." So the end, the beginning made sense. The end made the end made sense for part one. Really good movie though. I highly recommend everyone go out and see it. If you've ever read the series, you know um, Dune itself is very socio politically based. So just get ready for that. And wow, I've probably talked too much about this. I don't think I talked this much about Star Wars. Star Wars movie, uh, Rogue Rogue One. I think I did a review of. What was it, The Last Jedi? Probably one of those. Yeah, something like that. Go take a look at my history to find my last movie review. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget, read books, folks. Be literate. Literacy is good. Bye. Let's see, I'll even read you another quote to close out. Let's see. We can learn much from those who came before us. The most valuable legacy our predecessors can leave us is the knowledge of how to avoid the same deadly mistakes. From the Reverend Mother Sheena to Ithacan Log. Never truer words were said. Take care, everyone. Bye. Yeah, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye now. Oh, stop capture, that's right.